Find out from our guest how Jesus lifted the weight off of his shoulders, next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Welcome to another episode of the X Morgan Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We have today Brian Payton, who's come all the way from San Antonio? Yes, San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> I used to live in Austin for a couple of years myself. I ah. used to live. Did you ever live in Austin? Uh, I've been up there many, many times, but yeah. never lived there. Love Texas. That's yeah. uh, neat. Well, I appreciate you coming. You're actually here for some conference uh, things going on this next weekend. So yeah, we're doing some witnessing outreach stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's neat to have you here and share your story. So, uh, where were you born and which, where do you kind of hail from? So I was born in Indiana, but I'm a California boy. I, really? I moved to California when I was 11 months old. Family moved and, there and uh -huh. yeah, grew up there. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I claim California. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, family LDS were they? So, um, majority of my family was LDS, but they were what we, I guess you'd call like the fringe LDS. They, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, different levels of activity. My yeah. grandmother was very active. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say, you know, like my mother was not very active. Oh. Um, but you went to church, did you? Did you go to primary? And did not. No. Oh, you didn't. No, okay. Didn't go to uh, my interaction. My introduction to the church was uh, at around eleven, um, almost twelve. And oh, really? My grandmother decided it was time to stick the missionaries on me. She was a so, good Mormon girl, and so. So the missionaries give me the lessons, and the whole family, or just you? Just me. Really? My mom was like, I'll let them take the lessons, but I don't want them. Wow. And um, so I t took the lessons and said the, took the prayer challenge. And <laughs> with all the wisdom that a 12-year-old has, I go, yeah, I felt something. Yeah. And it was, let's, let's join the church. So I oh. became a member at 12. And so were you active after that? Do you got very, the deacons and teacher, priest and all that? Very active. Yeah. I wanted to be the first one there to pass the sacrament, prepare really? it all. Bear my testimony every uh, every month. Um, Bishop would give a challenge to read the Book of Mormon um, every day for a year. Sure, and they do that. I got to win it. So <laughs> it's very very active. Yeah. And testimony, I guess, of the church and Joseph Smith and. Absolutely, I I classify myself. Um, I now classify myself then as being a truth Mormon. I, I was in the church because I thought, without a doubt, it was the true church, yeah. the one true church. So my testimony really um, came, it, it, it came from that sort of core belief. Yeah. And yeah, just happy Mormon for, for a few years. And now Jesus, I guess, was, you learned the normal Mormon Jesus. I, he was your older brother and Older brother, absolutely. And I, what happened for me was, um, back then, missionaries, uh, you, you, you went at 19. So I had met my now wife, and we, were, we had been dating a couple of years. And that, that Oh, when that, you were in high school? Yep, oh. high school sweethearts. Yeah. And that year from 18 to 19, <laughs> I was really like, oh, you know, I'm not the best looking guy. And <laughs> she may not be waiting for me when I get back. And, and, um, and so we decided to get married. And oh, okay. when we decided to get married, that kind of caused the first issue for me. My bishop was uh, extremely disappointed. Oh, was he? Um, said some hurtful things. And oh. um, it just became apparent that I couldn't uh, operate as a member in that ward anymore. And Just because you hadn't gone on a mission and you'd... I had the stain of not going on a mission, yeah. and um, so I moved, we moved for, um, a couple years later. Now, was she LDS? Yep, Your my wife, uh, she, uh, she's born LDS, so, oh, okay. um, but we moved to Seattle, and I didn't have that uh, stain on me anymore, oh, okay. yeah. so we became very, very active, and... In, uh, in the ward there, and... Uh, yeah. oh. And temple, we were we wanted to go to the temple. That was our thing because okay. we would marry civilly. Yeah, we went, you know it's not for all time and eternity yet. 
and you're not promised tomorrow. So if I you're die, married, and, yeah. so I got we got to get to the temple, and we took the classes and went through all. Did the they make you wait a year? Had to wait a year your, after your marriage. Yep, yeah, had to wait a year. Okay. And in 2004, we went to the temple, and um, my temple experience experience is uh, what made me realize, you know, this is not the true church. And really. It was it even was, with all the preparation and the mental effort to get there and everything. What happened? You know, it's just such a strange experience, and the things that you do in the temple, um, and and when you think about it conceptually, I have to do these things to get to heaven, uh, to get in you know, into heaven to and, be accepted in. Yeah. You know, my conclusion when I left my uh, temple experience was that night. I I was like. I don't know exactly what I've been through, <laughs> but I know it wasn't good. It was a bad thing, and took the garments off that night. And, and this was the day you go through and get sealed to your wife. That night, the garments came off. Oh, my goodness. And my wife, um, fortunately, uh, praise God for this, but a week later, her garments came off as well, and it, and it was, you know... Oh what do you, what's the obvious next step? Stay in the church for 10 years, right? Oh, is that what you did? <laughs> we stayed in the church and... Well, just backing up a little bit, because I know the other people that have gone through the temple and some of them have had uh, previous experience in like white witchcraft and some other kinds of things and, and really felt uncomfortable in the temple. But we usually go there with our family and our friends and we bishops and other things and... We just kind of seem like we get locked into it. What, what can you explain without, and, and not if you're uncomfortable, but, you know, is there anything specific that you, two or three things that you... So I'll say it this way. The people I went to the temple with, I respected a lot. Sure. And, and loved a lot. And, and I just... So there was no question of you getting up and walking out, right? No, when I When they say, if you don't want to accept these covenants and... I, I thought about it. Yeah. But I'm like, I can't, you know, that was the day we're getting sealed. I can't leave my wife at the <laughs> oh, that's proverbial. Right. You got to get that far yeah. anyway to get sealed. So um, I'll just say this. I, I realized how foolish people looked. And then I realized, wait a minute, I have the same things on that these people have. You're wearing have the on. same thing as you. And, I, and then I went, and it, it, it was, I realized what these people are saying and doing is foolish. Wait, I'm doing this as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through it because I was, you know, kind of captive was, audience. Sure. But I remember when we were uh, invited to the celestial room, and it's like this is what I had wanted. This is what my wife and I had wanted, yeah. and I wanted to get out of the celestial room as fast as I possibly could. Oh my it, it was just there is, and I was still young. I was 22, but yeah. so I, I couldn't place it really. But I knew that there was something There's bad something there. Wrong. And did you even were you even aware of any Masonic connection with any of the? Absolutely no. not. No. Okay. No. Just a twenty. See, we don't. We don't know that either. But yeah, just a twenty-two year old kid wanting to get married for time and all eternity. So the garments come off, but you stay active for ten years. And you know, I I kind of I tell my wife we got punished because they stuck us in primary for ten years. So our church experience was <laughs> always... In the nursery or just the young kids or whatever? I probably would have preferred the nursery. Oh. We, we always got like five, six, seven-year-olds, right? And then, A room full of little kids. <laughs> and then my last, uh, my last calling, Bishop calls me and he goes, all right, we're, we're moving you to a new calling. And I'm going, all right, no more, prim no more uh, primary. And he goes, you're going to teach the 17, 16, 17, or 17 18 year old. Oh, great. And I'm going, that's the worst. You know, that's the <laughs> total worst. So we, we, our church experience for 10 years was go to sacrament, uh, be bored out of our minds. In primary. And then go to primary and babysit for two hours. Oh. And um, during that time, though, we were sort of studying his church history. Were you really? We were. And we, and I can't pinpoint the exact date, but somewhere from 2004 to 2014, we we just came to the conclusion it's not true. And you, do you remember anything specific you read or questions you had about something? So, uh, race and the priesthood just brutalized me because I have a uh, 
African American brother, and um, and that's hard to understand how that changed, isn't it? Polygamy, yeah, that was that bothered me. Polygamy bothered me. I mean, just all the church history, really. And and yeah. I can never square DNC 132. The polygamy. And and for me, it was more logical. It was a more logical problem, which is, hey, you know, allegedly God gives Joseph Smith three rules he's got to follow, which is you got to be a priesthood holder, um, the the woman you marry has to be a virgin, and you've got to get your first wife's approval. He had the first one, but he didn't do the other two. And I'm going, I just can never square it. And um, I never dared talk to anybody in the ward about yeah, it. Uh, yeah, I almost don't feel like you can, can you? I mean, you just... And, and I remember on my way out, um, the, uh, there's, a, there's the movement where it was ordained women. And I remember I'm sitting in an elders quorum uh, meeting, and it's just a boring elders quorum lesson, and I want to sleep. And um, the guy, the elders quorum president, makes a comment to me. And, and um, I said to him, you know, my wife uh, runs a part of our company because we had a pretty large company at that time. And I go, she speaks around the world. And I go, you know, you should just give her the priesthood so that she could teach this lesson so that we all wouldn't fall asleep. Well, that was a big, oh. that, that was a big mistake. Yeah, of course. <laughs> had had the had the missionaries come and talk to me and explain to me how women can't have the and I wasn't serious. No. But just I was at the point where it was time for us to leave, mm -hmm. and so we left the church, and we took the dive that so many uh, former Mormons make, which was go straight into agnostic sort of, you know, I'm gonna. What were you feeling? Just that if the church, true church isn't true, then nothing is kind of thing? Or even is there a God? I think it's best said like this, you know, the Mormon church has the fullness, right? And all Christ, all of other, we'll call, you know, all those sects over there, Christianity, they don't have the complete truth. Right. So when you find out that the whole truth isn't the truth, well, why would you waste your time looking at something the, even the, that, that doesn't have the complete truth right so for us we just we were happy running our business and and uh, not really okay god's over there he may be there he may not i don't know but he doesn't care about us and let's just go on with our life <laughs> and we lived that way for many many years wow. and um you know at this time earl uh our business is becoming very successful and going around the world speaking um, and we were running an investment company that we focused on Texas real estate oh. and um, so super happy successful and then in January of 2017 uh, I call it a crucible of suffering <laughs> uh, some people get to um, when when God calls them out it, sometimes it's you know a parade of roses and balloons and for for me it wasn't that um, so the first week uh, second week of January um, we don't have any kids so our dogs are like our kids yeah and our Jack Russell Terrier died so we were all we were oh, devastated no. and that was on a <laughs> that was on a Tuesday so then on Friday um, we got notice, and without getting into the minutia of it, but we had gotten notice that our bank accounts had gotten frozen to the tune of $4.4 million. And that made it to where we couldn't pay our employees, our staff, or uh, even feed ourselves. These are lawsuits or something that had just gone. Yeah. I mean, we don't need details, but just they got frozen. Yeah, yeah. so we, we had some litigation stuff, and yeah. we had to get over it. But And then... So we're going, we're working through that, and then on Monday, still not a week, uh, we discovered that uh, we had some accounting abnormalities, and we had a we <laughs> being had a, an accountant, I know what that means. <laughs> and you know, we had a business partner that had access to all of our bank accounts and escrow accounts and stuff, and um, fully trusted this person. And we realized that uh, we had an uh, embezzlement issue, yeah. and it's a very significant embezzlement issue. And I remember, um, you know, I had attained a certain level of success, American dream, if you will, had cars, had a big old house, 
um, completely impractical. And <laughs> um, I realized now my worth, my self-worth, uh, was tied into all of my... Material things, probably, huh? All of them. Yeah. And now we're sort of left with a decision, which is, you know, are we going to start to get rid of our stuff so that we can take care of this issue that our partner left us with, or are we not? And we decided we were going to, but then what that means is the cars are gone, the house is <laughs> gone, the, everything that my wife and I had built for 15 years was gone. Wow. And um, so we, my wife and I are, are not eating, not sleeping, and we're up late one night in bed, and actually early morning, and um, we just got into a really dark place where we started talking about killing ourselves. And mm. um, it's just, it's like, it's not worth it. You know, it's not worth it to go on. And um, unless you've been in that, I guess you really can't appreciate what you're going through. Yeah, right? it, you know, um, I, I, again, I think God was crushing us because I was a person who was filled with so much pride and <laughs> ego and I needed that to happen to me. Really? Of course, at the time, I'm like, no, you're not. this is horrible, you know. So um, we start talking about the ways that we're going to kill ourselves and and oh my goodness, um, we have a nine millimeter. We live in Texas, so you know it's like <laughs> I got to have a gun in every cupboard. So uh, we had a nine millimeter um, right next to the bed, and um, we're just talking about it and. I decided, or my wife goes, we got to we gotta lay off our employees uh, that day. So she goes, well, we have to lay off the employees. So she leaves and I'm home alone. And I start to talk to the top bullet in the chamber and um, how this bullet is going to release me of this pain that I have and the suffering that I'm going oh through. Gosh. And I'm just about to do it. And the thought comes into my mind, which is, you know, if I do this right now, my wife is going to be really upset at me because I made her fire our employees alone. So I go, okay. So you're worried about your wife getting mad at you? And, you know, late after the fact, my wife said, I would have been mad at you. So Oh, you told her? I did. And so I went. And I guess we can laugh about it now, but I'm so sorry you had to go through that. So I, I, I went, uh, we, we did have the thing with our employees, and what happened was um, my wife went, I, I need God. So she went, at, of course, where do you go? She goes to general conference talks. And she's um, going, I'm not feeling anything. These general conference talks are empty. This is not good. And... Um, she then starts to look up Christian pastors' talks. She comes to me. Really? She comes to me and says, um, "Brian, we need to go to a, we need to go to church. And if you don't pick a church, I'm going to go back to our ward." So I go, "Okay, I got to find a church." And I didn't want to. Um, you didn't want to go back to church. I didn't want. I didn't. At the, I told her. I said, "We didn't need Jesus when we were on our way up. We don't need Jesus when we're on our way down." <laughs> And finally, I just gave in, Earl, and I, I, I went into my bedroom, and I, I said the most un-Mormon prayer ever. It, it was basically... It most un-Mormon prayer. I didn't it was fold, from the heart, though, wasn't it? it? It was, but I didn't fold my arms. No. I didn't speak in King James English. <laughs> it was just, Jesus, dude, if you're there, man, I cannot carry this weight. This weight is crushing me, and I need you to help me lift it. And I just, it was just a comfort... Um, a piece that it's going to be okay. Really? And and shortly thereafter, went into a church, and I remember the first time we walked into a Christian church, I looked to the right, and I'm like, they're drinking sin juice, they're drinking coffee. Coffee. And then we walk in, and they're playing rock music, and this is not reverent at all. Uh, but the pastor that day gave a, a talk that was specifically for us, and it, it, was, it was basically about how God will walk with you and he will lift your weights he will lift your burdens he and used the word weight he did yeah <laughs> after you'd been <laughs> and and we we had to move so we weren't 
we, we didn't have a, a saving moment then, but we went into another church a couple weeks later, and we walk into this church uh, February 26, 2017, and there's a biker sitting next to us, I mean like a biker gangster guy, and we're like, we didn't realize it, we got our Mormon minds on big time. Right? Or how were you dressed? So I was dressed pretty Mormon, right? Were you really? Dress shirt, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, but I'm looking, I'm going, why did they let this guy in here, right? And I remember the pastor comes walking out, and they do this, they do the sermon and all that. And it wasn't really a sermon that week. It was more of like a recap of some stuff they had been doing. So I'm sitting there going, oh, this is, you know, not my thing. And they did the baptisms at the end of the oh. sermon. And, they're, and I'm watching the baptism, first baptism, and the guy doesn't go all the way underneath. And I go, that doesn't count. <laughs> and... And then they continue to baptize people, and I look at my wife, and my wife's just bawling, like uncontrollably crying. And then I I realize wait, I'm uncontrollably crying. I mean I I'm a I don't cry, <laughs> uh, try not to, and, and I'm uncontrollably crying. And that day we gave our lives to the Lord, and really ever since it's when we learned about the reality of hell. I remember my wife turned to a gentleman we were talking to, and she said, "If she goes, you're telling me Christians believe this? And he goes, absolutely. And she goes, then why isn't every Christian going out and talking to Mormons telling them constantly? The, the right? good news, huh? <laughs> so that's, that's really what we do now. You know, we, um, God has blessed us to be able to um, come and talk to Mormons and, and tell them, uh, preach Christ crucified. And um, we do some other stuff, but we just, it's been amazing to see the Lord work through um, being in, in, in a witnessing experience with people. Well, these messages that you were hearing, um, did you... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but was grace involved in this? Did you start understanding who Jesus was and who we are and what he did for us? Where, where did you hear that message? It absolutely blew my mind. So f after February 26th, I, I got to read this Bible. And oh, okay. I just, I'm going to start with the Gospels. And Jesus, the Jesus of the Gospels, blew my mind. This is a this is this a, isn't Mormon Jesus. This is, is a person who hangs out with the poor. He hangs out with uh, Samaritans. The biker he, dude. <laughs> he hangs out with the biker dude, and the Jesus that I was taught, I have to be worthy to oh, attain. Absolutely. Him and yeah. and uh, just one story real quick. I, we're standing outside the San Antonio Temple, and a young man runs by, um, and we get into a conversation with him. And he, I asked him his age, he goes, I'm 20. And he goes, uh, he proceeds to tell me he, the exact words, I can't, I, I haven't gone on my mission yet because I've got a pornography addiction and a drug addiction, and I'm trying to be worthy of Jesus' love. Uh -huh. And I'm going, you got to read the Gospels because the Jesus of the Gospels, he hung out with people like you. Yeah. He loves you the way you are. And he went to the cross and saved you uh, in your sin. He knew that you were that. And, and his love was so great that he went anyway. So, And, and the messages that, well, you mentioned the Gospels. And then, what, and then I started reading after that, started reading Paul's messages yeah. about grace and works. And it's just a great joyful message isn't it and how and how messed up we are i mean that yeah. blew my mind but it's it's so true and you know the word and being washed in the word constantly is just such a wonderful thing it's such a wonderful experience in the in the way that my wife and i love the bible um and and it's so precious to us now yeah. and to think about it and and contrast that with when we were mormons We'd, we'd walk into church every day with the, or every Sunday with the Bible, but we never read it. That, we never cared to read it. Isn't that true? So, it's, it's sitting there in that quad every, every, every week. I always say the Book of Mormon is uh, always pristine in a Mormon's quad, but when you get to the pages of the New and Old Testament, it's pretty dusty. I'd guarantee it. 
Oh, you mean the Book of Mormon's when well read? Well read, read, it's yeah. pristine. It's you know, but the but, but the Bible <laughs> is really filled with dust. Well, as you look back, um, you've <laughs> you've experienced such things, and you're kind of shared with us a, a real tragic time, kind of time for you. Um, what did Jesus? How do you how do you perceive all that with Jesus? And, I'm, I'm thankful for it, yeah. and I know that um, it, it's, it's sometimes it boggles the mind to think about how much God loves us. I mean, how much the Father loves us to send uh, the Son here um, when we are, you know, in a state of not loving God, not seeking God, not wanting after God. And yet, even through all of that, um, He sent His Son to die for us. Yeah. And I, I've, I tell Mormons this when I talk to them. I go, when you, when you think it's about you, you disrespect that love that, that God showed for you. When That's you a good point, isn't it? When we think it's about us. When you think that you have some part to play in that, it's, it's really simple. Did Jesus do it or did he not? If he didn't, then okay, maybe you have to do something. But if he did it, rest in that. And if you're not resting in that, well... What kind of responses do you get when you do that? You do this at San Antonio Temple, and you're up here for a general conference to do it here in Salt Lake. Yeah, we just... What we kind have, of responses have you had? We have a love for uh, our Mormon brothers and sisters, and we want to see them uh, come to a true faith in, in Jesus and in the Gospels. And the responses can be anywhere from, yeah. you know, get out of here, <laughs> or they can be... Uh, you can see God work through people, and that and He'll humble their hearts to whether they listen to the message. And maybe plant a seed that uh, somewhere down the road will flower a little, huh? <laughs> whether whether I'm the one who leads them to Christ, or I'm the one who plants the seed for someone else to. Right. He's the one doing the saving, yeah. and uh, all the glory goes to Him. Well, what kind of, I know you've kind of shared a message to the LDS, but anything you want to say to family or friends? Or? It, read, I would say read the Gospels. You yeah. know, get acquainted with Jesus, uh, the Jesus of the Gospels, and, mm -hmm. and contrast that with the Jesus that you're learning about in your ward and when you talk to your leaders. And, and what you will quickly find is uh, they are very, very different people. And then have the courage um, to to run into the arms of your savior yeah great message brian thanks so much anything else that you can think of i mean you'll probably think of things after but no you, you have such a fascinating story and but i think coming to christ after that time away from him is is really fantastic and that your wife was willing to do it with you yeah, we're, we're fortunate. You know, we, we do have some family members that aren't happy with our decision, sure. but we didn't lose our marriage, and, yeah. and our marriage is better than it ever has been. Yeah. And I always tell people, I go, you know, I've been all around the world. I've had ups and downs, but the one thing that I know is um, I am exactly in the right place where my God wants me to be. Yeah. And when you are in that place, there's nothing but, but contentment and and peace so and that's worth everything isn't it so amen thanks brian and appreciate you coming all the way from san antonio to do this so <laughs> Thank thanks you. and we'll see you next time on the ex-mormon files